this is going to be our first actual play session. Uh, we did session zero the last time and created our characters, created the uh, uh, fair bit of the town, and this will be our first uh, adventure. An entirely innocent use of an incredibly cursed object. This useless lesbian being fucking useless. I read a great paper back in my anthropology degree. What does Bastard have going for him? When we ended our last session, technically between sessions, uh, we rolled the season's change move for spring and got a 10 plus, I believe an 11 on it. Sounds and right. that means that you got to choose a seasonal boon. And in this case, what you chose and what you asked for was uh, useful information or interesting news. And so in this session, we will be kind of zooming in and, and starting off in the, the uh, in town, getting to know our, our heroes a little bit, getting to know the town in actual play a little bit, and then uh, then there will be some interesting news. So my question for you, Alan, is um, you've got some surplus left in the granary, but it was a close thing. So what happened to make you fret about running out over the winter or the last few months? And then what did you do or get others to do to turn things around? Sometime around midwinter, uh, there was a, a really bad snowstorm and part of the roof collapsed. And uh, a, quite a bit of snow got in and ruined probably half of the, uh, the barley that we had. Uh, it was just mush and unusable and by the time we got everything dug out, it was just, we had to basically chuck it. Um, and it made getting through the rest of the season uh, a very near thing. And in fact, the hunters managed to go out on a midwinter trip and uh, snag a large game animal uh, that we ended up being able to smoke in the middle of winter that significantly increased our ability to feed everybody. Karina, what, uh, you're one of the hunters, right? So what, uh, what do you think you got? Like big game that would be out there. Deer, of course, if you can find them. Uh, Wissants, which are, if you're not familiar with that, those are, are uh, basically a forest buffalo. Boars, feathered drakes. Um, bears i think probably it was a wizard those bones like stayed in a pot for basically the rest of winter oh they're still there yeah. <laughs> it's still going give me just a quick insight into Islewind's reaction on realizing what had happened oh she had a complete breakdown like in the 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 not collapsed corner of the granary is just like was just like sobbing in a corner and trying to figure out how this was going to happen and just could not get herself together for like a solid 10 minutes did someone get you out of it or did you get yourself out of it and then kind of take charge i feel like someone got me out of it or at okay. least showed up and like showed concern and gave a grounding point for the panic attack to stop. Yeah, All right. I, I think it might've uh, cool. been Alex. Cool, so kind of jumping ahead, Karina, um, obviously you did get out into the woods once during the winter. What meager quarry have you and Caradoc, Caradoc uh, been able to, to snag over the last, you know, the last few days? Probably just a lot of like game hens, like birds. Um, she was, we were probably aiming for something more significant, but, um, honestly, it's been as much Caradoc, if not me, like mm -hmm. him flushing birds out and me being able to catch them. What's your favorite thing about being out in the woods? 
what's your favorite thing about being out in the great wood the great wood is interesting because um we have this pact with the forest folk supposedly how long ago did the forest folk disappear uh the last time anyone remembers seeing one of the forest folk and like the, mm -hmm. the last time there's been a confirmed sighting not counting Rhiannon because her story, like what she says, doesn't count. Sure. Um, but the last time, like, like everyone agrees that yeah, there were there were forest folk around was about ten years ago. So Karina's only been in town for five. Right. So, so as far as she's concerned, she's like, I don't know what this forest folk bullshit is, um, <laughs> but we have this pact with these forest folk, whatever those are, that we won't touch these living trees. But that means that there's a lot of mature trees in this forest. Like it is a deep, old forest and it has a personality. So it's it's just a very peaceful and mm -hmm. she appreciates the the depth and the solitude that the woods have. Alex, so what's your favorite part of harvesting the winter tubers every spring? And what is your role in that process? I think it's the smell and having like, warm damp earth in their hands is just like deeply it both really reminds them of having like warm damp blood on their hands and like a very different smell like it is both at the same time very like that but also a distinctly different thing that is a lot nicer i think their role in that process is nothing particularly special like i think they're just another person out in a field there is also a kind of a kind of a comfort in that they they don't have to be like extraordinary in a like really awful way anymore. I know you mentioned when we were creating characters that you do that that um, Helior is worshipped through songs and hymns. Yeah. Like do you do you like do you and the other farmers when you're digging do you sing? Yeah, I think there is probably like a stone top work song to kind of like keep everyone on pace with like the you know the slow line marching across the potato field mm -hmm. um yeah like i you know i don't think it's a Lagosi song it's not a devotional song but i think singing in general is also just like a thing that is quite special to alex and that brings them a lot of joy you have a good voice they have like a good a good voice but not a trained voice if that makes sense mm -hmm. yep uh, i know i've known many of like you know and like they and and they like they really love singing and like they the passion is really what carries it. Cool. Um, so I am picturing Alex and a bunch of farmers like kind of as we pan over like yeah Powell, hands Powell in the dirt. Probably there and like Powell's yeah. kids. Yeah. Yep. And Powell's kids are sort of like bumping around all over, like, like kind of running back and forth, running the, the the tubers to the to the to the the the, the wheelbarrows and so that's like kind of our establishing shot right we see like maybe a day or two of like the sun coming up the sun coming down people going out from the fields coming back into the fields work starting to shift and um Iowan, they've just started scattering seed for the barley and oats in the south field um and, and the village children have been spending the last couple of days as they scatter the seed. The children's job is to throw rocks at birds and um, you know, like crows and, and, and starlings in particular to, to kind of keep them away from, from, from the seed. My question for you is how long has it been since you did that job with the other kids? And what do you miss either the most about it or what do you miss the least about it? Well, I've been doing this job since I was eight. Um, so I assume the last time I did that was the year before. Um, and you know what? I really don't miss them teasing me about my arm. I have no throwing arm to speak of. I... Uh, I would try, and the, those rocks would not get very far. So what do you think your role then is like for this part of it? Probably figuring out like which, uh, how much we can spare for for seed, uh, like 
actual seeding of the fields, possibly doing some work with like crop rotation and that sort of thing. You basically have a third of the fields being rotated every season. Karina, uh, there's a dangerous beast in the woods near Stone Top, something that does not usually roam this close to town. Now, we're not talking about something that's going to like ruin the town or anything like that. Just, you know, there's there's something out there um, that is, you know, not not usually there. And you and the other hunters and, and, and trappers are kind of on guard about it. Um, but what is it or what do you at least think it is and how do you know this or why do you believe this? I think she's worried it could be a rage drake. Oh God. <laughs> saw so, uh, just, like a particularly large track and then also some evidence of something passing through the woods. Yeah. So the, 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 the claw print that you found, it looks more like a bird print than a like a bear print it is probably i don't know like 18 inches from end to end <clears throat> um and the the thing that's really kind of alarming to you was the depth of it right mm. just like how <laughs> into the into the mud the thing was how heavy whatever it was had to be to leave a print that deep it's got to be at least six, seven feet tall. And like that could be a good 20 feet long, depending on how big the, 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 the tail is. On the plus side, all the stories say that they don't fly. <clears throat> Yay. When you got back to town and shared notes with the other trappers and the hunters, there's like somebody was like, I found this horrible. And then you're like, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and Dragmar uh, definitely like kind of piped up is like, hmm, sounds like a Sindar egg. <laughs> and everyone just is like, oh, about that. <clears throat> um, all right, cool. Um, Alex uh kind of zooming in on today so hmm. some of the farmers have been sowing and others are planting beans and spring taters uh, but you have been hard at the back breaking work of plowing the fallows so you talked about your favorite part of picking the spring taters of the spring tubers What's your least favorite part about plowing the fallows? Alex does not have a lot of staying power, right? Like oh. they took they took a, a wound, you know, 18 years ago or some something uh to the side that like healed okay, but I think like, you know, for whatever reason, like maybe it maybe, you know, it nicked a lung. Like they just like, you know, working hard all day pulling a plow or like <laughs> steering a like stupid horse mm -hmm. is just like backbreaking, really like unpleasant labor that like by the end of the day just leaves them completely like wrung out. And everybody and, else like, in town is looking at you is like, well, of course you're the one who's gonna do this. You're built like a mountain. And then the other part of it probably too is just that it's lonely, mm. right? Like. It's not like sowing a, a field where you need a whole line of people to do it and everyone's like chatting back and forth. Like typically when you like <clears throat> harrow a field or you plow a field, like it's one person per field and there's no mm. one to talk to except the stupid horse. Maybe a kid running around like digging up little field stones here and there. Yeah, but yeah. like, you know, it's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do you get on with the horses? This horse, yeah. I think this horse is a bit of a bastard. Um, you got a name for the horse? Bastard. <laughs> I think it's just like a real, real stubborn, real stubborn piece of work. Um, which is where I guess it helps that, like, I think, which is probably why Alex like gets given this horse a lot, right? Because like, their like just <laughs> their sheer size and weight means that like even just by leaning on the horse they are more capable of like making it go a direction it doesn't want to than most people in town yep 
I think I don't think this horse is particularly fond of anyone, but I think nope. this horse particularly dislikes me. <laughs> All right. Uh, so bastard the horse. Yeah, let's this jot place. down this vital NPC. <laughs> I, it's going on the list. I mean, obviously, Stone Top only has two horses, so it's not like they've got a big choice here. But like, what does Bastard have going for him? Bastard, I think, like Alex, is a like Bastard's a big horse. <clears throat> okay. Like big, big Clydesdale uh, yeah. energy. We kind of like look up from Alex, like just you know, like like turning Bastard around, kind of at the end of the day as the sun's starting to get low, like having just finished like plowing through that that field. Or at least that chunk of field that you were working. Um, and we see uh, 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 like the kind of like line of farmers heading in from scattering seed with uh, uh, Iowan hanging at the back with your dad, Gethin, and Murd kind of coming along with you. Um, <clears throat> and what, what, uh, what kind of tall tale do you think Gethin is telling you um, as you and, and Murd head towards home? I mean, it's got to be something about the uh, the last encounter he had with a, a a rage drake, right? Do you think he's trying to scare you, or do you think he's like playing it up? I think Eilwyn thinks he's trying to scare her. So yeah, I think you guys are basically like trudging in. It's not that far, right? Because you're going to, uh, you know, just kind of coming in from here. So. Gethin dies telling the, the the story about the rage Drake and you know getting kind of all intense. Um, <clears throat> and Merg is normally like kind of joshing around back with, with him when he's telling these stories and like playing the playing the uh, uh, the I guess the straight man for for better lack of a better term um, and no whoa, oh, yeah, that kind of thing. And, and and this time he they are just they're just quiet, right? And like occasionally Gethin kind of looks at him and is like you know, like kind of expectantly, like and and then and Merg just kind of smiles and and um <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And and then you know gets that kind of distant look in his face, and you know. Um, and, you know, Gethin seems to set, tell that, like, he can tell that something's wrong, but he's, you know, it's a 14 year old kid. He's not gonna, you know, he's gonna give them a little, give them a little bit of space. And so Gethin kind of, you know, turns back to, you know, the, the, uh, his attention on, on, on you. Um, but like, what do you, what do you do? What do you say or, or do you say anything to, uh, to Merck? I don't think I would put them on blast in front of Da like that. Mm -hmm. Might pull them aside later. Might just let it go. Okay. So you'll get back to your house. Like Gethin goes in, right? And yells out, you know, basically the, the honey I'm home to Emrys and Perry. You know, we, the audience, get a glimpse of the, the Islewyn family home with like this weird fucking skull and antlers on the wall. Does, does Islewyn, like, do you have to take anything back to the granary or are you done for the day I, i've got some tablets or something like that that i've been you know keeping track of stuff on and i just i don't feel comfortable keeping that at home because there's just there this is the tannery too right do you take merg with you or do you go by yourself they hesitate at the door and they're usually off jogging with me and i think that's when i think that's when i ask yeah aren't you aren't you coming to kind of like step out a little bit and look kind of meaningfully towards the shed and then look at you and then yeah 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 okay yeah sorry but not so much of a jog just more like not plotting like like they don't seem like they're mopey or lethargic or anything just not there's no urgency to them so yeah you're kind of like you know wandering the path Powell and his family are all like 
their house is just like a riot of noise and like kids and family like like shouting at each other and a little bit of like, ah! and then you know like kind of descending into giggling and they you know like one of the kids like kind of like ah! at you like well, probably the smallest one but as you go past that and kind of around and through the ring wall and just this like gentle bustle of the village at night or village at sunset as people are kind of heading back home and 50 different families all starting to sit down to, to their own little dinners. But Merg still has that like quiet, distant feel to him. Do you say anything to him or do you, do you just be with him? I think this has been, this has been a pattern for about a week now. And I think we've finally gotten to the point where Eilwyn has had enough of this very weird, like, are you just being 14 or is this, like, is there something to this? Like, do you need space or am I going, or, you know, do we need to like punch this out or something like that? And Murray, I think, you, you know, like you kind of have this conversation maybe as you're rounding the corner to the pavilion that's in the background and <clears throat> he, uh, they just kind of like, like I'm doing right now. I was like, I, uh, I just feel off. Like my, everything feels kind of like I'm dreaming. Hey, it's fine. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. It, um, I just, I think I just need to sleep more. Um, and you can, you can tell that they are not fine, right? Like, like right, there's, right. there's no doubt in your mind that that that's just not willing to either not admitting to themselves that they've got a problem or not being willing to admit it to you. We do. Uh, go for the element of surprise, grab them by the scruff of the neck and attempt to drag them into the public house. <laughs> because <right>. desperate times <laughs> require desperate measures. <laughs> um. I think recall that, I am 410 yeah. and 95 pounds soaking wet. Right. And 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 my visualization of Merg is basically PETA from the Hunger Games. Mm -hmm. Um so you know, just like a brick of a young person. Uh, but they are not expecting it. And you know, you're their their little big sister. So, yeah, they're, 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 like you actually get a laugh out of them, and and uh, he's like, fine, 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 and you know they, they smile a little bit, uh, which is a perfect segue to Karina. Um, and and by the way, side thought, uh, uh, Alex, feel free to jump in at an appropriate point as you are bringing the the, the orneriest of ornery horses back to this place. So feel free to stop in for a drink whenever whenever it makes sense but Karina you are you're I'm assuming you're you're in the pub it's not busy because like most folk are back like basically like coming in from the fields and going to their like their families right for, for dinner and whatnot um, so the folks that are that tend to gather at the public house, right at sunset tend to be the ones who don't have a lot of family um it's like dagmar's there right and the uh, the old retired hunter um obviously caridwin is there does caridwin have family in town i suspect she does i suspect she's got like um i think her brother has a family okay. um her brother might be the cobbler actually okay so I think her brother is married and has a couple kids. But she's not married, right? Correct. Um, was she ever? Or like as far as you know? She talks about she used to have a young man, but he 
left town, went to Marsh Edge on like a trading trip and then just didn't come back. Oh, wow. Okay. Did you ever find out what happened? He decided to stay in Marsh Edge. That sucks. You said it was maybe like 10 years ago? Yeah, so it was before Karina was in town. So oh, yeah, but was it, when, was it while Karina was in Marsh Edge? You know what? Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> did, did you know him? It's a big place. It's like 800, 900 yeah. people. She may have been like, maybe if you put him in front of me, I would recognize his face, but I didn't know him, know him. Okay, cool. So went on a trade mission, decided to stay. What a dick. But it's pretty, it's pretty chill. There's maybe like you and Dagmar and a couple of the other like uh, um, trappers that like, you know, the, the folks that, that ply the wood. But I guess a question for you, like what about this place, like the, the public house in particular? Like give me a couple, of, give me a detail that when you look at it, like it makes, it just, it just makes you think like this is home. Part of its appeal is just that it's it's very welcoming. Like it has the huge, an enormous fireplace at one end of the building um, that keeps things warm. Um, it always smells very good um, because yeah. there's pretty much always hot food to be had if you want it. I just need to throw in like like for the last few months, it smelled like bone broth soup. There's someone there who's happy to see her, and that person. Caridwen always seems to be happy to see her. So she always has this like gut level sense of I will be welcomed when I come here. And I think that more than anything else is what makes her feel like it's home. Awesome. I love that. Uh, I'm going to throw in a detail because it's something that just occurred to me. The, um, sure. the, the hearth, the big fireplace that you described. Mm -hmm. uh, so like, I think it's natural to kind of picture a fireplace like that as like those kind of like round stone, like field stone type things mm -hmm. stacked up. But in this case, it's a couple of like really big worked, like dressed stones to sort of like Tetris in. And they've got like on a couple of spots, like uh, scroll work runics, like runes and, and glyphs carved around them, a, you know, faded and worn away. But it's very, very clearly like just pieced together out of uh like big hunks of maker stone from dragged out of the old wall <clears throat> yeah i like that um i like that you are you know sitting there you're watching caridwin uh uh kind of like paying a lot of attention to one of the patrons mm -hmm. laughing at, at laughing at what he says and telling him jokes and you know putting his hand on his shoulder or putting her hand on his shoulder and you know um <clears throat> just being extremely friendly uh and I'm, I'm just curious like what sort of emotion does that stir um i think it depends is the patron like local or are there somebody who's just passing through that's a good question i think they're local uh let's give them a name odrin is humorless um <clears throat> which makes the whole her laughing at at things that he says, mm -hmm. a weird sort of like juxtaposition, um, like because he's not funny, right? And and he doesn't seem to get jokes, and but 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 Caridwin is is, and not in a mean way, just kind of bantering with him and talking to him and filling the space in the conversation. Um, like if he's a farmer. Uh, like most of the folks in town, but I think that he's one of those guys that, like, he just, for whatever reason, didn't get married when he was younger, and then, like, just, I don't know, maybe gave up, maybe didn't, like, never really saw the, the need. Um, you know, I think he's got a, a, a mom that he takes care of that is, like, has, like, like has a lot of health problems, and so he doesn't like get out a lot or, mm -hmm. or never had a lot of friends. And then, then she passed away recently. And now he's just like, I don't have, I don't, I have no friend circle, even though I live in a village of 300 people. As far as you can tell, it's a perfectly innocent sort of thing, but you definitely can tell that Odrin is somewhat taken with her. 
Karina's response to the way Caridwin is acting is she's being a good hostess. This is, she wants to make everyone feel at home and she's been particularly solicitous towards him since his only family just died. And everyone in town knows that he's doesn't, not great at friends, doesn't seem to have that many people who are close to him and he's been spending more time at the public house recently. Mm -hmm. So that's because he doesn't have anyone at home. It was, it was a hard winter. Karina's not reading much into it on Caridwin's end, but she is paying attention to the way he's acting. Um, and she's not saying or doing anything about it yet. That yeah. ominous yet makes me think that this is probably a great time <laughs> for... Does the public house have a door? I mean, I guess it would have to. Hobbs, I know you have thought about stone top and doors more than probably anyone else. Hobbs, like, it, 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 what do you think? Door? I like what we landed on with the uh, the carved wooden doors being a, like, status symbol sort of thing where you get a craftsperson from Marsh Edge to make a carved wooden door for your house when you finally made it. Um... <laughs> And it's like every of every one of these doors is unique. And that's like how you tell people's houses is like, oh, it's the door that has the thing on it. Gotcha. So or what kind like, of doors do people who don't have a fancy carved door have? If you've like just built your house and you haven't made it yet, like you you haven't made it yet. Um, you've got like either a tapestry there, like a heavy, a heavy tapestry to keep the the heat in. Um in the winter time or maybe like a, a, a woven reed situation where you've got like fabric wrapped around it and it just sort of plugs the hole. So it's basically like a thatch that you just sort yeah. of pull out and push aside, maybe with a, some, some fur over it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It sort of begs the question of uh, Karina, does your house have a door? No. Okay. <laughs> her house is where she just occasionally like she has to have somewhere to keep her shit that isn't on the floor of the public house, but she doesn't spend a ton of time there. Um, the public house definitely has a wooden door though. Yeah, so I think oh, yeah, yeah, I think there's like there's like a carved fancy wooden door um, that has like a big half is like the the main bulk of the design on it. Okay. Uh, for the public house, and I think Alex yeah like pulls it open and like steps inside, you know, like sweaty, smeared with dirt. <laughs> I think they've got a bruise on one of their shins where they like got clipped by the horse trying to kick them. Um, and they just look like so fed up with life. <laughs> I think Karina takes one look at Alex's face and just laughs and then uh, calls over to Caridwin to bring them a beer. Yeah. Yeah, and I think they just look at you like, thank, thank you, like... Yeah. You're a good friend to laugh at my misfortune and to bring me beer and my suffering. Like, yes. Do you sit with with uh, with with um, Karina, or do you sit by yourself? Yeah, I think so, probably. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Eilwyn, did you and like, did you and uh, a nerd go over there, or did you like grab your own little spot? Oh, I think we're I think we're off on our own. All right. So, for the record, uh, the two of you see them there. Karina, you definitely like saw Eilwyn drag Merg in, Merg kind of chuckling a little bit, them kind of teasing each other. The energy feeling a little bit off, but you know, uh, they, they clearly were, were going to like chat and have a drink with each other or by themselves. Alex uh, mm -hmm. gives like a traditional Legosi toast, uh, right? And we do the like, cheers. Hey. Like, yeah. <laughs> what do you think that toast is? I think it's probably in Legosi. Um, like I am, I am, I imagine it is like the cultural equivalent to like a lachaim or a slancha. So who won today? You or the bastard? We finished the field, and I'm not dead. So I guess I won, but I don't feel much like it. Is that bruise on on Alex's leg visible? Or yeah, like <laughs> Karina gestures at at their leg, like. How's that? How's that feel? Looks real good. I think it's gonna hurt worse. Uh, hurt worse tomorrow. You know the way these things are. I yeah. One of these days, I'm gonna figure it out. 
I've tried apples. I've tried oats. I've tried sugar. The bastard has to like something. Kara Nguyen, uh, like, puts down a, a shot of vodka or of whiskey in front of of uh, of Alex, follows it with like a bigger th thing of thick ale and goes, he likes not being punched. And I think Alex just like looks up at her with like a, a kind of fond exasperation and is like, all right, we'll tell you what, tomorrow we'll make a deal. I'll mind the bar and you can steer the damn horse. <laughs> oh, hon, there's... No, no, we're just not going to do that. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> she kind of like turns and winks at Caridwin, uh, or sorry, Karina, Karina. Karina. and uh, uh, like like slides a, 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 a mug your way. She gets like really ruddy color in her cheeks and she mutters something pretty like un unintelligible and just sort of takes the drink and like doesn't make eye contact with Alex for a second. She smiles and leaves you guys. <laughs> Uh, uh, to the conversation. There's still no progress on the responding front, I see. She's just being friendly. I will befriend the bastard before this goes anywhere. Just friend. When you two have this conversation, <laughs> is it in the local tongue or is it in, in Ligosi? I think mostly Alex does speak the local the local language. I think like Gosi is like he's a he's kind of fraught uh, for them. It's complicated, sure. and we're just talking in a bar. So like let's let's talk in a language that doesn't have deep cultural baggage associated with it. What would she want with me? Might I venture an observation? Uh, you're going to anyway, so be my guest. I think they like they like take a long pause and they like think about it and you know i think it's very much that moment of like in the show everyone is like right and like now some like deep considered wisdom is going to like you know they're going to say an aphorism it's going to be really wise sure. just like that's some fucking bullshit <laughs> so stop insulting my taste in people go around with a horse named bastard Bastard's not all bad. Just breaks your leg every now and again. It's, it's a tempestuous <laughs> relationship, okay? Speaking of tempestuous, um, kind of at about that time, the the wind shifts a little bit, and you all start to hear it kind of like hitting the thatch on the roof, and uh, definitely seems like a, a good soaking rain is starting up. It's just right. like... Ugh, I'm gonna have to walk home in this later is mostly what her response is. Like she doesn't say that, but she just looks sort of like you live I'm next just... door. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh let's actually cut to the conversation between Eilwyn and and, and Merg. So are you trying to get them to get, get them to talk at all or she's just in Merg's face, like, all right. Spill. What's going on? I want details. You're going to tell me we're going to drink every single drop of this shit that's in this pub if we have to. Right. I'll even uh, bribe the bartender to slip the good stuff if you start talking. You are definitely triggering a move here. That sounds like both pressing and enticing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm so when you press or entice an NPC, say what you want them to do or not do. If they have reason to resist, which they do in this case, then roll plus charisma. Uh, then on a 10 plus, they'll either do as you want or reveal the easiest way to convince them. On a seven to nine, they'll reveal something you can do to convince them, but it'll likely be costly, tricky, or distasteful. I have rolled a 10 and I have plus one charisma. So nice. that is an 11. I don't see any reason why then that they would they would put up any resistance past that point right so merg's just like it's it's the staff right it's the that, that thing it, did you did you see anything when you picked it up yeah Uh, did you? I saw a mum, and I saw a 
So there, just burning. Just turn to ash. It was all, it was all on fire. Yeah, me too. I kind of look, look look over their shoulder back towards uh, uh, Karina and and Alex and and um, she she was she was there she was she was holding a shield or like cursing the sky the sun was an eye. The sun was an eye, an eye of fire. What? And I can't, I can't stop seeing it. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's just messing with us, right? I'll, I'll, I'll get good at it, you know? I'll, what? I'll make it stop. It's what I do, right? I, I fix things. I, get, I mean, I got, you know, I got you, Alan. I got your back. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get you, let's get you a good whiskey. <laughs> do you flag Gerdwin down or do you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And she, yeah. She comes over just like, like all smiles. What can I do for you two little ones? Can we get him a get him a good one? Oh, hon, yeah, of course. It big strapping young, you know, big strapping youth yeah. like you, like like you know, gives you the little smile and uh, uh, disappears behind the bar and then comes back in a little bit. It, it's a small shot, right? She puts one down in front of you too. Doesn't make a big deal about it. Um, just sort of like puts it down, puts it down, just sort of like 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 swoops away. Remind me if Iowen has mentioned this vision of hers to Karina or the fact that Karina is in her vision. Not at all. Secret vision. So uh, the, the, the evening stretches on and it does like it definitely seems to have helped Merg to like get that off of their chest a bit. Um, like you can tell it's still bugging them. You can tell that they're still like, you know, have a little bit of a cloud over them, but between talking about it and the whiskey, uh, that, that is, um, even, even being nursed, that is, you know, making a big difference. Um, the place starts to fill up a bit more. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, Alex, do you like step out in the rain to wash off at some point or do you just like a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> um, Kind of at about the same time that you're doing that, or that like as you're coming in from that, Alwyn's mom, mom yeah. is like basically like like in a cloak with a um, like a little uh, uh, basket, right? And like like just like drenched, like the the water's just rolling off of this wool cloak, and and she just pops in and uh, 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 like. She sees you. She's like, "Oh, hey, is Alwyn in there?" Alex like nods and is like, "Yeah, it looks like you got sidetracked on the way to the granary." Oh, well, good. I'm glad I don't have to take this down and leave it at the bottom of the uh, uh, bottom of the bluff again. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> you know, she like nods and 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 uh, actually, she she her hands are full. She kind of like looks at you. Hopefully, yeah, and I like yeah, I like open the door. When you open the door, she like kind of like ducks in and shakes that up. And it's gotten more people have started to show up, right? So it's, you know, got a little bit more noise to it. There's a little more rock or raucous. Um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, you kind of like get a whiff too as you follow her. Or, or do you follow her in or do you head back home? Yeah, I think so. Like, um, but yeah, you get a whiff of, of, of her home, her home cooked meal. 
that she has brought to the, the, the public house for her wayward children. I think as they step inside, they just like, they just like hesitate in the doorway like for just a moment. And I don't think they are even conscious that they're doing it. I think there are a lot of, there are a lot of hard one instincts that Alex has that they try, they're trying to like unlearn. And when they catch themselves doing them, they like actively stop doing them. And one of them is like looking at crowded rooms as spaces where violence is in potentia. And like kind of as you are doing that, uh, uh... uh, Emrys is actually like beckoning to you and like waving you to, uh, uh, and she's standing by Eilwyn and and, and Merg and is like kind of put the thing down and and said a couple of words, but then she like looks up and starts beckoning to um, uh, uh, to, to, to Alex. Yeah, Um, and I think think that's probably like what like what like catches their attention and like they realize they're doing it and they're like, Mm. <laughs> and yeah, like immediately, like stop, stop looking at people like they're just meat, full of vulnerable holes. It's like that, like a horse with a gadfly thing. They like shake that off. They're like, yeah, yep. no, nothing about that. And then yeah, go over to the table. <laughs> mm. Emrys is 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 uh, noted for being extremely curious. So, how does that curiosity? And this is a, mostly a question for Eilwyn. Um, mm-hmm. But how does that curiosity manifest most of the time? And in particular, how does it relate to the fact that her daughter has found like the biggest treasure trove of weird shit in like forever? I think my my intent with that was she's always asking questions. Um, She asks more questions than makes like affirmative statements about things. She was incredibly curious about the the scrolls that uh, Eilwyn started nicking. Mm-hmm. Um, was not particularly uh, interested in learning to read herself, um, but has been very interested in the content of those scrolls. And so has been like the person that Eilwyn kind of digests the material to a question for Alex. Um, mm. So you basically taught uh, uh, Eilwyn to read, right? Yeah. So you definitely recognize that someone shouldn't be able to just go from not being able to read to be able to decipher a dead language. <clears throat> and I'm just sort of wondering, like, what's going on in your brain about that? Yeah, like, everyone I met who loved reading could read, like, 10 different languages. And, like, I don't know how they learned to do that. Like, I guess that's just what happens if you care about reading a lot and you keep doing it. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not an academic. Like, <laughs> Okay. No, I, I, I just love that. I, I The main thing I'm actually chuck- chuckling about is the idea that that Alex has very neat penmanship for writing ransom letters. <laughs> Look, it's very important that you be able to sign your name legibly <laughs> on the contract that you sign with the client. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> so anyhow, there's a little bit of like like chit chat, a lot of uh, of of Emrys asking, um, you know, like asking questions and asking what's going on and you know like what you guys what, what did you all get up to today how is the bastard you know did you give her uh and then and then she ends up like asking some uncomfortable questions to alex of like oh have you ever been hurt that bad before they just like find the pieces of the truth that without context like work and so they're like oh yeah you know like Back in my like, back in my mid twenties, I got hurt pretty bad. Still got the scar from it. And like, with a normal person who's not going to ask a follow up question, that's a fine way to close off the line of inquiry. But like, right. here it's not going to cut it. You're right. Because <laughs> the next so you, question is, oh my god, how'd you get hurt? And it's like, right, fuck. right. Do you like actively try and be evasive about it? Like Alex is very good at passive, uh, passive evasiveness, right? In the sense that like, yeah, they just like give like short decontextualized answers and then people go away 
they're good at that. Mm. I don't think they are at all good at actively trying to keep secrets. Gotcha. I think they've like worked too hard to be a like honest, emotionally forthright and like functional person. And so I think, I think at the very least, they probably do give away that like they have been in quite, a, in quite, you know, in like a serious fight. Eilwyn notices that that has been more than they necessarily have ever wanted to tell anyone and knows her mother. Mm -hmm. um, and is going to try and head this off. Eilwyn, when you like kind of intervene, you know your mom, mm -hmm. you know how to like yeah. distract her and, you know. Yeah you know you, you you bring her down your rabbit hole pretty easily which also conveniently allows you to direct her attention away from Mergen who is mm -hmm. you know while better still definitely like a little bit quiet and a little bit like you can tell that that occasionally when he looks at ma that he's you know or at mom that he's seen like like he's getting a flashback the vision yeah so kind of like while this conversation is happening um there's the sort of like it's not quite the like record screeching type thing mm -hmm. but there is like a uh you hear the door open and then there is like a kind of a, a hush coming over like like sort of like like ripples out throughout the room um <clears throat> and it's not a hostile hush at all it's more of a whoa um and 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 uh uh Karina, you're kind of like like where you're situated, you can see why this is happening. Um one of the uh older trappers uh named Gorlas. Uh <laughs> and Luke's laughing because half of every stone top campaign starts with Little Gorlas. Um Gorlas basically comes like <clears throat> limping in. And keep in mind, he's coming in out of the rain. He doesn't have a cloak. He's got like like scabbed over blood, kind of like like rolling down the back of his his uh, uh, head, like behind his ear, um, like like raspberries basically, like like scraped along the side of his face. Um, <clears throat> his he's missing one of his boots. He like 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 he just looks torn up um and like and he's at the best of times he's a kind of kooky intense old guy and right now he looks like something out of a you know like like, like a, a hammer horror movie right like just he's like the harbinger has just walked in the door and and is just, just has like one eye kind of is, is just like open twice as big as the other one and like whenever when he realizes everyone's looking at him he just kind of <clears throat> whiskey and you know like there's a bunch of like that kind of breaks the spell and a bunch of people are just like oh or like go grab him somebody throws a cloak over him and they whisk him over to get by the fire um <clears throat> and he starts uh yeah i mean like basically there's a good chunk of time while people are just like making sure he's okay making sure that he's not dying and and everything someone goes and 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 fetches Rhiannon. um excuse me uh and he's mostly just sort of mumbling uh uh, uh incoherently of, of like like one word two words you catch Crinwin, you catch, um, <clears throat> you know, being watched, you'd catch like something big and, and, a, and a few other detail, like, like little snippets like that. When Golas comes in, like, and everything goes quiet, like instinctively, uh, Alex's hand like twitches and is like halfway down to like a sword that is no longer hanging like at their belt. And then they like catch themselves and like flex the hand and then like relax it. Karina absolutely gets up and sort of sidles over. She grabs a beer mm -hmm. and sidles over to this dude's name one more time, please. Gorlas. And kind of helps him sit down and says, Hey, you're looking pretty rough there. What you want to tell me what happened? Um, I'm not gonna 
play out his dialogue because sure. um, I think it would become tiresome very quickly. Uh, he speaks in one word, one to th one to three word sentences. The story that you get out of him is so he's a trapper, not a hunter, right? So he like sets snares and then he goes out and collects them, mostly you know like small, small, uh, small game type stuff, stoats and rabbits and 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 the like. Um, and he, I think one of the things that he is kind of most known for is he sets some snares really far out. Uh, like he'll spend two, three nights out in the woods going to, to like, like setting snares out further than just about anybody else will. And, you know, cause no, like, like someone's got to, you know, do, do the far out stuff and, and all the other, all the local areas picked clean. So. Um, so he said, like, he was going out to check out on, uh, check some of his, his furthest out there uh, um, uh, snares. And he says that he got a good, like, like, like he, he was happy. He, 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 there was a good, uh, 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 like, bunch of conies that he'd snared. And he was collecting them and he was in the middle of cleaning them when uh, he, he got jumped. And Crin went, basically, he's, he's saying it was Crin went. Um, like no, like it must have been Grinwin, right? Little 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 shits just you know got up on me. Should have should have figured it out. You know, you don't hear songbirds from the you know you don't hear that kind of songbird until later in the summer. You don't hear you know like like boar squealing coming from the trees. And but he's like, <clears throat> um, but they. The last thing he remembers is looking at one of them in the face, and it had a rock in its hand. And it, you know, clocked him with it. And then when he woke up, everything just felt off. And he he wandered for he doesn't know how long. Could have been minutes, could have been hours, could have been like he, he swears it could have been days. Um, and then he found himself in a place that he's like he was he was completely off off bearings. He's sure that he went instead of going back towards home. He ended up accidentally going deeper into the woods and he found himself in what must have been some of them old maker ruins. And <clears throat> like the, the 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 description of the place is like a bunch of buildings that like a bunch of them were stacked stones, like big stacked stones, like the old wall, but even bigger, like like white white stone and, and carved, you know, like scroll work all up and down them. A uh, number of the buildings were uh, like, like, like they was woven out of trees. And, <clears throat> and, and, and the, the whole place, like it was still spring there, but the plants were like all the grass and it was, man, it's almost knee high already. And the the trees were were already budding, even though it's hardly a handful of buds, you know, like on most of the trees around here. We're just planting our grass. It's it's tall, and there is this I don't know, like a trough that big as this room, maybe a, like a bucket, but low and wide, bunch of mud and water and gross in it, and statues like, you know, trees like statues, and, but, but then they, they were still alive and they kept growing. And there is this in the water sticking out of it. There, I remember there's a big old hunk stone. And he looks up at the hearth and he's like, like that on it. And he, he's pointing at the the like the scroll work, like the runes yeah. and the carvings. Um, <clears throat> but different. Yeah. 
And then something under that water moved. And I ran. Because... Because, yeah. I don't remember how long I ran, but then I was, I remember the, the color was gone, right? Like not all the moss and uh, that was glowing, wasn't there no more. And then I recognize, you know, like, I, I, I was pretty sure I was cold. That was, I think my first real clue is that I didn't have my cloak, no. And I, I realized I didn't have a boot and my feet hurt fucking Krinwin took, you know, like, like left me like this. And, and my head hurt like nothing, but I knew I wanted to get my way back there. I need to leave a market. So I marked it and I found some of my snares and I made it back. And take that, extend it by, you know, like probably minutes. 10 times as long uh -huh. and you having to draw all of that out of him and right. so on and so forth. Well, you tell me, why do you, like, why do you take, why are you taking him seriously? I think if Alex comes close enough to listen in, they will probably get the same read that Karina does, which there's a difference between someone who's spinning a tall tale and someone who is so frazzled by whatever traumatic event they just went through that they can hardly talk about it. Alex takes their like not yet started like bowl of like stew or soup or whatever the home cooked meal was and like brings it over and like puts it next to gall ass because like clearly the man needs to eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When he starts describing the maker ruin. Yeah. Eilwyn absolutely perks up because I am steeped in lore about the makers and their arts. Ah. Do I recognize any of the things that he is describing from my reading? Um, I mean, like at a high level, this is absolutely maker shit, right? Like this is not uh, forest folk stuff that he's talking about. Um, mm -hmm. And definitely green lords, like, or however you would translate that. Um, but if you'd mm -hmm. like to spout lore about it, you absolutely can. I would love to spout some lore about it. <laughs> um, all right. That is a nine and spout lore is plus int. Yes. So nine plus two is a solid 11. Nice. So um, a 10 plus I use something interesting and relevant. Or sorry, interesting and useful. Okay, so the interesting thing is that Definitely a green lord um, uh, 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 ruin. And there's no way that a green lord ruin should or would be as well preserved as he's describing it. Just the passage of time in a forest would have would have buried it and overgrown it and everything like that. So like assuming that it's real and not a hallucination, like there's something weird going on, right? The specific useful thing is the tablet that he described, like the big stone thing in the in the pool. Uh, from how he described it, and from the markings that he that 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 he describes on it, the runes that are on them are runes of earth and runes of spirits, and runes related to rejuvenation. Okay. How do you get that that information out of them so that you can figure out that they are in fact spirit rooms right. of those of those things? Eilwyn is the kind of person who would have like a bag with some scrolls in it with her mm -hmm. a lot, and just be like, so so, like once everyone's been like, okay, okay, this is this dude just like spinning yeah, tall yeah. tales, and they've like scattered off. With the, we don't get to hear about rage drakes, whatever. <laughs> um be like so while you're eating which of these looks most like 
the stuff that you were seeing it does it look more like a or b gotcha this one or this one and just like process of elimination gets to uh a scroll while he's eating and just kind of going rrr, 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 rrr. <laughs> like and just like all he's got to do is grunt and point but gets to this uh the scroll that's about um like it's it's healing sort of but she hasn't quite like managed to completely decipher it yet but it's got something to do with like healing earth earthy healing um she doesn't she doesn't really get it but there's a couple of them where he's pointing at like you know th there might also be some blood involved or maybe it's just watering soil you don't know Right, sacrifice they, of some kind yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but you get a follow-up question i don't have a good one at the moment unfortunately okay. i have a thing i would like to maybe do while all of this interrogation uh of poor old goles is going on yeah they make make efforts to get a kind of like a soothing soothing beverage prepared for this man that will do him some good when rihanna eventually like does show up and like sees that that's on the kettle she like gives you a good solid like like sniff of approval like mm. um <clears throat> but i'm curious re, re, uh, or karina is there anything that that you are doing above and beyond uh to sort of like helping extract this information and keep him comfortable i think a lot of it is like almost like reassuring him that i believe him right but she does also I'm trying to think what she would ask for She's aiming to get a piece of his clothing because she's going to have Caradoc track his scent. Um, but I mean, like you could pretty easily just like get a rag and like like sop some of his blood away. Yeah, and, and, honestly, like, that's probably what she does is just like casually takes a rag and wipes his face and keeps it. The business about seeing something in the water that catches her attention. That would probably be something that Karina asks more about being like, what do you remember? about what you saw in the water. Like, was it, did you see a shadow? Did you see, like, was it reflective? How deep was the water? Like, was it a stream? Was it a pool? As you like are asking him these questions, he becomes mm -hmm. more and more terrified or like, mm -hmm. like, like he's clearly becoming like almost panicky about it. You definitely you you can push forward and try and get him to tell you, but it will require a, a parlay, a rolling parlay, because like he does not want to. Like his brain is trying to 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 retreat from that. I think I'm gonna roll parlay. Uh, <laughs> and I'm gonna offer him a shot. Just get it out. Like lancing a boil, you'll feel better, and then you can forget all about it. Yeah, I think yeah, I'm gonna, go I ahead think I'm gonna and... aid here. Um, oh yeah. What did you say? By, and okay. I, yeah, I think I think what that looks like is like Alex. Alex like comes back over with the drink that is now being like prepared. Okay. I'm like uh, yeah. sits down, presses Golas's hands around it. All right, so go ahead and roll it. They got a six and a four. Okay, so two things. One, um, he's gonna spill. Uh, right. But two, you uh this is a 10 plus right so um that triggers your potential for greatness potential for greatness is one of the would-be heroes moves and what it reads is once per level when you roll a stat and get a 10 plus mark one of the following note the level during which you marked it you don't have to mark them in order so basically i get to go in and uh bump one of my stats because i rolled a 10 plus doing this so um now i get plus one to charisma going forward is that right yep yep well okay. i mean you could theoretically you could. choose to increase your hit points or your your damage die but it like increasing your charisma absolutely seems like the most sense right here. yeah i've always pictured this is not necessarily you're getting better in the moment but more like we are learning about your character yeah that makes sense on a 10 plus they do what you want right Okay. Uh, or okay. they reveal the easiest way for you to convince them and you know between the broth and the whiskey and offering him uh uh you know like actually caring about what he has to say mm -hmm. he it takes some coaxing but he does get it out 
you realize that he didn't really see anything in particular. The water was muddy and dark. It wasn't even that deep, but it rippled. Like it, um, you know, like stone toppers don't spend a lot of time around deep water. So it's not like we even necessarily have like a, 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 a language for describing something big moving underneath bodies of water, right? It could like, have been something under there. Right, right. There, I mean, there probably was something under there, but it it felt to him, he didn't see it because he ran as soon as it, as he got a sense of what it was and whatever it was, it was full of hate and jealousy and anger. And he just got this sense that of being small and made of meat. Like he felt like a coney in one of his own snares. Is there any other questions that you guys want to get out of him before we start to wrap up? I'm not going to make you roll anymore. Like, like you basically got him to the point where he's going to tell you whatever he can. What Karina wants to know is if anybody has any idea how long he was actually gone for. Gorlis is, is known to often be gone like two or three days at a time. And when you sure. ask around, like that lines up with what other people like, like the last time somebody saw him either in town or near town. So mm -hmm. he's been gone for probably about two to three days. Like he couldn't have wandered that far in a, with, a, with that kind of a head trauma. So whatever it was, he probably didn't go that far if he actually found something and it wasn't just a hallucination. But he did also say that he like carved some markings on trees as he left. Mm -hmm. And you have a dog who's a very good tracker. So, very good um, you know, the rain's going to make that a little bit dirt more difficult. But, you know, like the next few days, if it doesn't get too much worse, he should still yeah. be able to, um, to do it. Okay. I think Alex like beckons to Eilwyn. I, you know, I imagine we like get a little bit of distance from Goris, right? Like, because he probably is not going to enjoy this conversation very much if he has to listen to it. I think Alex's voice kind of like hushes a little and they're like, you, first off, you okay? Bit of a stressful evening. We're all good. They give you the like. Are you, are you, like, are you just saying that, or is that really true? Look, like, if I'm not, I will be. There was something they taught us back in Lagos in the church. Uh, it was caught up with some myth cycle or another. I won't bore you with the details, but they said that each of the things below was like a like a fruit grown from some horrible seed in human hearts. This one grown from greed. That one from despair. There was, I remember part of it now, there was an old nursery rhyme about it with some of their names. And so what I'm wondering is, what grows from hate? And I don't know if I'm spouting Lauren asking you for aid or if Alex is asking you to spout Lauren offering to aid. Right, you. yeah. But like, I think one of those two things is happening. Interesting. I'm, you know, I'm fine with you guys, with y'all handling it either way. Uh, if no, if no other reason than, uh, Luke, you said you don't have your dice handy. Do you want me to roll the third dice, the third die as well? Yes, that would be lovely. Okay. Uh, it did not help. Uh, I got an eight. So something interesting, the names that are given to the things below are for these kind of almost unknowable, almost godlike entities. And that's not usually what people end up encountering in the real world. <clears throat> what people end up encountering in the real world are things corrupted by the things below. Or, or emanations of them, just based off of that feeling of, of hatred and jealousy. I'd like being prey, I think, is yeah. like a key detail there too. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't know that I, Jer, have a name for this one yet. Uh, if, I, even better. As far as the interesting thing goes, whatever this thing is, it's likely 
some spirit or creature that lived there before that was somehow corrupted by by an entity of of hunting and hatred and and being a predator and as this is a spout lore about the things below i get a follow-up question yeah how can it be confronted oh interesting um well uh alex has told you stories of a saint from uh, of helior from way back when who confronted it with nothing more than uh, faith. a light and yeah. faith or like a candle and faith but that's preposterous you clearly don't have a saint with you you've definitely seen bits talking about some academic thing of ah yes well the preferred method is to strike one down with or chalcum which burns away the impure if you do not have any or chalcum yeah. <laughs> crass bronze will do in store-bought will do fine yeah when you reach the end of a session, give an example of how you fulfilled the requirement of your drive. If everyone agrees, mark XP. Um, my drive as seeker is respect. Impress another with your superior knowledge. Was anyone impressed with my superior knowledge this time? I will flag so we don't do this every week. Like, I think yeah. Alex is pretty easily impressed by your knowledge because they're proud of you. So, like, Aww. That shouldn't be where the bar lives, right. like, in perpetuum. First time we've seen it on screen, take the XP. My drive is charity, bring relief or comfort to someone who is suffering. Oh, you did that. You totally yeah. did that. Nice. Helped out that mm -hmm. poor old man. Way to specifically go out of your way to get to, to, to tick it off, too. Karina's drive is bravery, face up to one of your fears, which... She definitely passed the buck on facing up to her fear of flirting back with Yeah, Kurt, I was going to say, you should have flirted happen. back. And it dawns on me that I didn't put anything in front of you really about the whole you're not cut out for this versus what you're capable of, which is something for me to kind of consider for next time. But I, I don't think she got uh, that XP. So next, describe how your opinion of or relationship with another character, PC or NPC, has changed this session. If everyone agrees, mark XP. I don't think any of mine have necessarily changed. We just did a lot of establishing movement in this session. Emrys knows I was wounded in battle how long before she starts asking how I got there. Eilwyn had basically pieced that together already mm. and was just not prying because they clearly didn't want me shit. to. We all had secrets. I'm trying to think if, if Karina's relationship with any NPCs changed. Possibly from Gorlas is mostly full of shit to sometimes Gorlas tells the truth. Probably you just felt about him the same way that everyone in the village does, which is like, oh, it's old Gorlas, he's full of shit. Mm -hmm. That's fair. And um, now you have like a specific relationship with him that is on screen. I'll take that if everybody else is okay with it. Yeah. yeah. Finally, answer these questions as a group. Did we learn something about the wider world or its history? I would say yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yeah. Everyone mark an XP. Yay. Did we overcome a threat to Stone Top or the greater region? Yes, I defeated a terrible horse. You in the leg. I still won. I got that field. Back. Did we improve our standing or influence with our neighbors? Only if you count Gorlas as a neighbor. Yeah, I was going to say, I reckon the three of us probably like improved our standing with Gorlas. When someone's just gone through something traumatic, like I think having people there who listen to them and mm. care for them and like be being believed after you've gone through something really fucked up, I think dramatically changes your opinion of someone. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. And finally, did we make some lasting improvement to Stone Top or tangible progress towards doing so? I don't think you've got it at this point. Like you, that's not the <laughs> right. We'll get there. What I'd like to do is a round of stars and wishes. So the idea is that each of us offers a star to, to the game or to each other or something that you particularly liked. Um, and then a wish is something that you would actively like to see more or less of at the, the in not necessarily the next session, but in upcoming sessions. So, and it might be something that you'd like to see different, something that you would just like it a chance to do. Um, all right, it's not necessarily a criticism, or, but it could be a criticism as well. 
So if you don't mind, I would like to just start with a star of uh, just the casual banter between Lex and 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 Karina. Oh, it, it was just delightful. Glad you enjoyed it. Alex, do you want to go? My stars are like just one. There were so many like deeply wholesome moments this session. But it's just like God, I love these characters and I really want them to be okay. And then a specific star to Jeremy uh, for just like your NPCs are so fucking good. The specificity with which their voices are observed is just like, ah, incredible. Well, thank you. I really enjoyed the interaction between Alwyn and her sibling. I liked the tension there. I liked the relationship dynamics that it set up, but it like um, really helped provoke all that that sense of unease. Um, That's what I was going for. Yeah. (laughs) And I also really appreciated everyone giving me the opportunity to portray this useless lesbian being fucking useless because that was really fun for me. And that was one of my stars was going to be, I, I was absolutely <laughs> delighted by that scene. Um, I also very much enjoyed the Alex Bastard interaction. Honestly, if I ever truly befriend that horse, I expect us all to get XP for making a lasting improvement to Stone Top. <laughs> Improving your relationship with your neighbors too. Um, Alex, I also wanted to say I really appreciate all the like the little moments that you took to help develop Alex's character. You know, being is becoming. People are always changing. It's about what you choose to what you choose to change into. I, I wanted to throw a star at Cat too for the um, uh, the subtly like like capturing his scent so you can take advantage of the hound mm. and 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 track him. Mm. I'm doing more giving this dog backstory than I am Karina. That's not quite true, but. Uh, what what would you put on your wishes? I just would like more opportunity to um, have her confront some fears, but I mean, I don't even feel like I really need to say, I want to mess around with her whole destined bullshit because I can, my eyes work and I can tell that you're planning to go there. So I don't really feel. <laughs> We did forget to do destiny at the top of the session. Right. So oh shit. Sure. I chose the destined background. Oh, and yeah. there's actually like a mechanical function that we're supposed to do at the beginning of every session. But uh yeah, so so next time we should just make a point to yeah. do that because it yeah. may yeah. have changed the um, way this session played out. So you know. I hope I find Alex's like speaking voice more. Is there anything that we could do to help with that? I will think about it. Okay. I think probably it's just going to be a matter of like, it'll take me a couple sessions and I'll settle into it, but like, I'll give it a think. Sure. I wish I could figure out how to ask follow-up questions. Um, (laughs) I'll figure it out. If you ask an extremely broad, reachy question, you might not get a particularly detailed answer. Sure. But you'll, you know, like I'll, I'll do what I can to give you an answer. Um, Additionally, after a session of like sitting in Eilwyn's personality, I think I'm going to actually change her drive already. I know I'm the worst, um, but I think secrecy makes more more sense with the person that I feel like she is. Mm-hmm. Um, secrecy being deflect or evade an inquiry into your doings. I always feel bad about having put that on there as a drive because it's such a terrible player trait to uh to encourage but it's such a great character trait to encourage. Uh-huh. <laughs> if and when you realize that like your character is different than the tick marks that you've made then like just feel free to change them um and that even goes down to like you know moves hold on you said you we can change our moves at this point none of your moves for your playbook have really come on screen like once it's been on screen, then it becomes a little bit of a bit bigger deal to be like, okay, well, let's sure. work on that. And uh, well played on just going for a fucking roll because uh, you're you're doing the would be hero right when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Like, well, here I go. 